Hey Astro Kids and welcome back. This is your April 2020 horoscope for Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. And before we get into the cards, I want to go ahead and take a look at the charts. So this is something a little bit different that we're doing this time around. It's a little bit of a longer horoscope as I have been called to go a little bit more into this horoscope due to the times that we are going through right now. So starting off here, first major planetary shift that we see is on April 3rd, 2020. This is Venus entering Gemini. So we've spent a great deal of time with Venus here in Taurus. It did make a conjunction with Uranus to start off its transit in Taurus, where it is really here reestablishing our values, our security, our finances, our relationships, our self-worth. And so as it shifts into Gemini, it is calling for you to have fun, to lighten up, to bring that joy back into your life. Venus in Gemini is a very fun, free-spirited energy, and it's moving into this space here where it is calling for you to remember to be positive, to be upbeat, to do what is fun, to do what brings you joy in your life. And for many of you, Having Leo here in your first house, this puts Venus back in your 11th house of Gemini. So this is going into your social sphere, right? Your groups, your relationships, organizations that you're a part of. And so even though we are in this space here of not socially interacting face to face, there is still a call here, Venus being in your 11th house, to still connect with people, to still stay connected to your groups, to your activities. If there are things that you can do online to connect, this is a big calling here in April to remember to have fun, to remember to laugh, to remember to enjoy yourself, to make conversation with people. So still calling for you to be social, to interact with others, even though we are going through these difficult times, and this is making an aspect over to Pluto and Jupiter and Capricorn. Yes, Saturn has left to enter Aquarius. You can go ahead and check out the Saturn and Aquarius video if you are interested in knowing more about this. But Saturn has left Capricorn to enter Aquarius and it will remain in Aquarius all the way through to July, then it will retrograde back into Capricorn, and we'll see it re-enter Aquarius once again with Jupiter in December. So this is our new reality that we're shifting into, this Saturn and Aquarius, where this is breaking down new structures, breaking down new systems, breaking down the foundation, I'm sorry, old systems, old structures, breaking down the foundation and the reality that we have constructed in this physical reality here. So this is bringing us into a brand new reality, a brand new structure, a brand new system. And yes, Capricorn is very much focused on tradition. It's focused on the government. It's focused on rules, discipline, on these physical constructs that we have put into place it's focused on status career class reputation and as it shifts into aquarius it starts to focus on our long-term goals it starts to focus on the future on technology on the collective how are we associating with one another in these large groups how are we coming together in a space of unity all of humanity and so as saturn shifts into aquarius which for many of you is in your seventh house right 
for those of you who have Leo rising, Aquarius will always be your seventh house. So your house of relationships. So as Saturn shifts into Aquarius, into your house of relationships, this is shifting the focus and the responsibility on connecting to others, on establishing relationships, on connection. And so you see this is a huge theme as Venus shifts, but especially because Saturn is back in your seventh house. But as Venus shifts into your 11th house, there's a big theme here for those of you who have Leo rising or even those of you who have Leo sun or moon, you may feel this as well, where this is calling for you to be social. This is calling for you to connect to others. And so even though we're in these trying times, there is still this major call for you to have this social interaction, to have this communication, to interact with others. And so, yes, Venus is also making an aspect over to Saturn and Mars, which will be in a conjunction here. They're already in a conjunction, but we're going to see Mars come to two degrees here. April 3rd, making this conjunction to Saturn. And so there is this all of this energy and passion and excitement around connecting and associating with others. And so once again, huge call to be social, to interact with others, to find ways to relate, to connect, to stay connected, to stay social with people in your lives. So very, very important, very huge theme here about being social, being connected with others. Now Venus is also making the aspect over to the moon in Leo. And so this puts the moon into your first house where many of you can feel very emotional, very sensitive, very reactive, right? This puts a lot of your feeling at the forefront of your expression. And so at this time, many may see you as highly reactive, highly sensitive, and you may feel a lot of emotion and a call to connect to others at this time. Also, we have Venus making the aspect over to Juno, which is in Libra. And this is something that we will be talking about as we go on further into this Venus and Gemini experience as Venus is going to make a conjunction with the North Node in May. So relationships and social connection are starting to become of high importance to those of you who are Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Juno here in your third house, this, the asteroid of marriage, of commitment, is here in your third house of communication, of intellect, of siblings, of neighbors, of short distance travel, of familiar surroundings, of brief interaction with others. And so as Juno is here, once again, there's a strong call for you to be social, to be interactive, to connect to others. This also makes an aspect over to Mercury and Neptune, which is going to be sitting together here in Pisces as Mercury is getting ready to leave and shift its way out of Aries out of Pisces into Aries. That is something that we will see on April 11th. But this energy here of Mercury and Neptune and Pisces, very confusing, very odd, very spiritual, mystical, lost in the fog kind of feeling, trying to find information, trying to make sense of things as Part of this is connecting to others, is being social, being interactive, because this does create this intense feeling of loneliness also. And for many of you, if you have Pisces in your eighth house, 
This can create a deep feeling of loneliness. This can create a feeling of emptiness. This feeling of deep feeling of fears and insecurities coming up and really feeling lost in this. And a lot of this, once again, is due to this extreme call for many of you that you need to be more social, more interactive with others. Now, Venus here is also making an aspect over to the sun in Aries. And the sun in Aries is very interesting this time around. This is a very different kind of energy surrounding this Aries season as the sun entered Aries, making an aspect with, making a conjunction with Chiron and Lilith. So the sun has been going through this extreme ego death, this extreme experience of fears and insecurities coming to the surface and confusion and a lot of misunderstood feelings, a lot going on here as far as the self. Now, for many of you, Aries is in your ninth house. Okay. So this does not apply to all of you with Leo rising. It does depend on where your degrees fall. But for many of you, traditionally speaking, with Leo rising, Aries is your ninth house. So it is this exploration, this faith, this belief, this philosophy. And so for many of you, having the sun here in Aries with this interaction of Chiron and coming off of this interaction with Lilith. There's a lot here about your belief systems, about your philosophy, about what you deem as the ultimate truth and belief in your life, and a lot that is being questioned and challenged in this area. So for many of you, you may be thinking of changing belief systems changing the way that you understand things in your life as this is majorly being met with conflict and fear and insecurity and doubt, right? Very much a weird spot here for your belief systems. So let's take a look at the next major shift here which will be on April 4th when Jupiter makes a conjunction with Pluto. Now this is huge and we already saw Pluto and Saturn make a conjunction. And we've seen Mars make a conjunction with Pluto and Jupiter already, right? These tight Capricorn energies all together in this tight space. So Jupiter is now making this conjunction with Pluto. And of course, later on in December, we're going to see Saturn make a conjunction to Jupiter, which will not be in Capricorn. It will be in Aquarius. Okay, so very much hitting on this new reality structure. But with Jupiter and Pluto here, this is interesting because this is the first time that we're seeing this Jupiter in Capricorn and this Pluto in Capricorn coming together without any other planetary activity in Capricorn, right? So Jupiter is actually acting as this big dominant force here. For the first time, Saturn has been predominantly the ruler here in Capricorn. But now we're having this big, benefic, optimistic energy of Jupiter here in Capricorn. And Jupiter here is at its fall position. It is weakened here in Capricorn as this is a test of faith because Jupiter is used to bringing the luck and the hope and the optimism and the positivity to lift us up. But here in Capricorn, Jupiter has to face the reality of the difficulties and the challenges and the expectations of being in this social construct that we call reality. And so Jupiter here is being majorly tested in Capricorn. Many of you being tested in your area of where does your faith lie? 
And for many of you, Capricorn is ruling your sixth house. Daily responsibilities, routines, everyday things that you do in your reality that need to get done, your daily responsibilities. So with this energy of Jupiter and Pluto coming together, this can majorly expand and transform this area of your daily routines and responsibilities in your life. And so you can feel like there is something different that you need to do to change up your home, to change up your work, right? Many of you feeling like you need to do more to take care of your home, feeling like you have more responsibilities to take on with this Jupiter and Pluto energy changing up this area. And for many of you, major responsibilities and duties here in your workspace as well. Now also, here with this Jupiter-Pluto conjunction, remember that this is the first time that Jupiter and Pluto are joining in Capricorn here without Saturn. And so for many of you, this can feel like a relief as Saturn is very much this much harder, more difficult energy that is focused on responsibility, rules, limitations, restrictions. And so for many of you, you may feel a little bit of a weight lifted. Keep in mind, though, that Saturn is going to return into this space here, though. So keep in mind that even though this could feel like an opportunity to take a break, to relax, keep in mind that things can become more intense again when Saturn returns back into this space. Also keep in mind though that Saturn moving into Aquarius does shift the energy. And so once it does retrograde back into Capricorn, this energy is not going to be the same as it was, right? For many of you, your work situations, your daily routines, your responsibilities, your health, the things that you need to take care of are never going to be the same as they were because of this reality shift of this Saturn energy that has moved into Aquarius. Now this conjunction here is also making an aspect over to Venus. Remember that Venus is here in Gemini. And so there's a little bit of this conflict between work and fun. Okay, this Venus and Gemini energy that's back in your 11th house, wanting to have fun with others, wanting to be social, wanting to enjoy life, to connect, to have your long-term plans and dreams fulfilled. And this energy of this Pluto-Jupiter conjunction in your sixth house of taking care of daily responsibilities and routines are kind of in conflict here, right? There's This is calling for a balance between work and play. This is reminding you Yes, you have responsibilities, you have routines, you have things that need to get done, but also connect to others, laugh, have fun, enjoy yourself. So these energies a little bit in conflict here, really asking you to find the balance between what you deem as work and what you deem as having fun. And we're also seeing this on the other side as well as Venus is also making this square over to the moon in Virgo, which is saying, I feel like I need to take care of responsibilities. I feel like I need to be analytical, work-oriented, responsible, practical decisions, realistic, right? So this energy can very much make you feel emotional about wanting to take care of and take on responsibilities and duties in your life. And for many of you, Virgo is ruling your second house of your finances, of your security, of your structure in life. And so this can feel like a heavy call to take care of 
your responsibilities in terms of your finance, in terms of making money, in terms of being secure and stable. But also being challenged and met with this other desire of having fun and being social and interacting with others. So let's take a look at the next major planetary shift here, which happens on April 11th when Mercury shifts into Aries. So Mercury finally getting out of this really odd space of this daydreamy, imaginative, spiritual, kind of mystical energy where Mercury tends to get very lost and confused. So Mercury and Aries here is going to make a lot more sense as Mercury and Aries is changing the communication style. It's changing the information and the intellect style of where we are in our lives and a lot of clarity and focus coming back as Mercury shifts its way into Aries. Now keep in mind though that Lilith and Chiron are here in Aries making the conjunction to Mercury so it also can bring up a lot of insecurities a lot of feelings to the surface as well. And remember that this is happening in your ninth house for most of you. So surrounding your belief systems, your philosophy on life, right? Challenging what you believe and what you think to be true in this reality. And this can also affect you for those of you who are in college or in spiritual groups, in religious groups, right? This can majorly affect your belief system or the way that you see things in your spiritual beliefs and your philosophy. And Mercury is making an aspect over to the North Node in Cancer, which is at one degrees of Cancer. So we can see that the North Node is making its way, getting ready, to enter Gemini. So this North Node in Cancer is at its last few degrees here, getting ready to make its way into Gemini, where the destiny of what it is that you need to learn, what it is that you need to grow, the lessons are changing, right? This pull and this call of destiny to learn and grow and experience new things is shifting from pulling you in the direction of what you are connected to, what you care about, family. And for many of you, that energy is back in your 12th house of these otherworldly, subtle, hidden, more secretive, subconscious, spiritual, dreamlike things where it doesn't necessarily make sense. It doesn't necessarily add up. And so there's a lot here with this North Node in Cancer that has been really pulling you and calling you to trust in your intuition as it is dealing with these hidden, more unseen things behind the scenes, behind what is conscious, what you are consciously aware of. And now as this North Node shifts into Gemini, it is going to pull many of you in to your social sphere this North Node energy moving into Gemini where it is going to call for many of you to be more social, to be more connected to people, to speak more, to share your thoughts more with others. Now we also see Mercury making this aspect over to the moon, which will be in Sagittarius. And so making this trine over to the moon in Sagittarius, starting to feel adventurous, starting to feel excited, starting to want to ask more questions about life. And it is very much in tune with this Mercury in Aries, which is very much bringing things to the surface, bringing clarity into your awareness, into your beliefs. Remember that for many of you, Aries is sitting in your ninth house of your beliefs 
and your philosophies where this is bringing a lot of clarity and a lot of sense into that area. For many of you, Sagittarius is sitting back in your fifth house of joy, of excitement, of children, of life, of romance, of adventure, where this is really making you feel very adventure. This is making you feel adventurous. This is making you feel excited to go out, to do different things, to find ways of bringing humor and bringing fun into your life. And so this energy of the moon here in Sagittarius, again, for many of you entering into your fifth house, this can very much make you want to play games, want to do fun things around the house, want to bring humor into your life. And so again, there's a lot of this fun, social, entertaining kind of energy coming in here for many of you for the month of April. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next major planetary shift here, which happens on April 19th when the sun enters Taurus. So this is shifting us into a brand new season here, right? We're clearing out the airy season of wanting to push forward, wanting to be direct and honest and straightforward and to the point and really starting to slow this energy down as we enter into Taurus, which is much more centered around beauty and sensuality and slowing down, enjoying the moment, taking your time, right? We know that Taurus is this stubborn sign. You can't push Taurus. Taurus has to go at its own pace. And so really as the sun shifts here into Taurus, it's asking you to slow down, to take your time, to be in the present moment. And for many of you, this is your midheaven, right? This is going to vary for not, not for all of you, but for some of you, this is going to be your midheaven. This is the traditional point of the midheaven for Leo rising. And so in this career area, for many of you here, it's asking you to slow down. It's asking you to take your time to think things through, to be more practical, to make more rational decisions here in your career area. And so a lot here that is asking for you to really be patient, to be consistent, to take your time, to allow things to manifest here in this area. Now the sun is also making an aspect over to Saturn and Aquarius where these two energies, very different. Saturn and Aquarius trying to restructure, trying to break down old systems, trying to put the power and the dignity and the authority in the people, in innovation, in technology, in pushing us into the future. And the sun in Taurus really slow, taking its time. And it is making a, a conjunction to Uranus in Taurus, which is also here to support this Saturn and Aquarius energy as Uranus and Taurus is breaking down the values, is breaking down the belief systems, is breaking down the structure. Right. And remember that this is in your career house. And so you can kind of have these moments of breakthrough in your career, in your status and your reputation and your position in life. This can also change things up for you in your career, right? We can have very chaotic moments, very crazy moments here career-wise. And for many of you, this can shift your career. This can shift your focus and what it is that you want to do, what it is that you want to attain, breaking you out of these old systematic, old situations of work and career that you do not enjoy that does not serve any value or purpose in your life and shifting you into this brand new space of a career that truly does serve you 
in your purpose. So as the sun and Uranus come here together, this is very powerful, creating major shifts and shedding light on major changes and unexpected breakthroughs that can come to the surface here in your life. Now also, the sun in Taurus here is making a sextile over to the north node in Cancer. So these two energies, very similar, Taurus and Cancer, very much about comfort and stability and security in your life. And with this Cancer at the last degrees of Cancer here, this north node, there is very much this calling to do what serves a value, right? This last calling, this last opportunity, this last moment to do what truly nurtures you, to do what is truly of value, what is truly beneficial to you in your career. So this is the last call for you to make this major shift for those of you who have not in this area of career status reputation how you're being seen in the eyes of the public and really moving in to the direction of what serves you and what is truly secure and truly holds the best value in your life so let's go ahead and move on to the next major shift which will happen here on april 22nd with a new moon in taurus and this new moon will be the first new moon in a while that is not at four degrees, right? We're seeing this new moon at three degrees of Taurus. And remember that the moon is exalted in Taurus. And so the moon is very much in its power and dignity here in Taurus. But this new moon is coming into contact with Uranus which is also sitting here in Taurus, once again, breaking down values, breaking down systems, structures. Again, for those of you with Leo rising, for many of you in your career, in your status, how you're seen in the eyes of the public. And so this can shed major light on the shifts that need to take place. This can shed major light on breakthroughs, on major changes, unexpected moments here in your area of career. Now, once again, this is making an aspect over to the North Node. So once again, this major last call to make some kind of major change here in your area of how you are seen in the eyes of the public. And this is being supported once again by this Saturn in Aquarius. Now we're also getting this aspect over from Pluto and Jupiter in Capricorn. And so with this, there is this breakdown and this restructuring in this area for many of you. And remember that there is this relationship between what you do on a daily basis, right? Your responsibilities, your routine, and this area of career. This is what we are talking about with this Capricorn and Taurus energy. And so very much focus on work routine, the things that need to get done. There is this major shift going on here big time as Jupiter and Pluto are here making these big expansive shifts and changes in unexpected moments. And the sun and moon in this new moon in conjunction to Uranus also illustrating major changes and shifts that you can, for many of you, guarantee that there will be major shifts here in this area of work and career. Now, this is also making an aspect, right? This is making a semi-sextile over to Neptune and Pisces, where this Neptune and Pisces all year has been about dissolving the physical boundaries connecting to what is spiritual, connecting to your imagination, 
believing in something higher and greater. And while this is beneficial to you, this also can create many illusions and deceptions and confusion around this sort of shift that you are going through in your work and career. This can bring up a lot of questions. This can make you stuck in this space of confusion and getting lost in what is the ultimate choice that needs to be made here. And so while this is shedding light on the things that need to be done, this can bring up a lot of sensitivity, a lot of feelings of loss or confusion or fear here in this area as well. And remember that Pisces, for many of you, is in that eighth house where it can very much make you feel very, very confused in terms of these deeper passions, these deeper desires, and the things that you need to do in order to push forward, in order to get through this moment of challenge of crises. Yes, your eighth house is dealing with major life transformations. And so this moment can be highlighted in your eighth house of really needing to trust your intuition, needing to understand and believe in something higher and greater and believing that you can get there. Otherwise, this can create a lot of confusion and doubt and chaos in your life. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next major transit here, which is on April 25th when Pluto stations retrograde. So this is the first Pluto retrograde of 2020 that we are seeing. We went through Pluto retrograde in Capricorn majorly last year. This is the first time that we're seeing it happening at 25 degrees of Capricorn, however. So this is happening actually more towards the later degrees of Capricorn, which is coming to this point of long-term success. That is coming to this point of your career connected to your friendships and your status and your reputation and how you're coming off in the social sphere. And so less about work and routine and more about this interaction with the public and with these social groups and organizations. And so major shifts and changes happening here. And Pluto is intensifying and deepening that change as it is going retrograde here. And so this is where you can see major life transformations in your area of everyday routines and responsibilities in your job, for example, right? And anything that you see as working or as a job or a project or something that needs to be taken care of. And this is making the aspect over to Mercury, which is exactly at 25. So this is an exact square of Mercury and this Jupiter-Pluto retrograde conjunction, where this can be very intense as this is bringing major light to the surface. This is majorly telling you the information that needs to come to the surface, dealing with the changes that need to be made in this area of your life. And this is making a conjunction with Lilith in Aries as well, where this can come up with insecurities and fears and this can really make many of you feel uncomfortable in this area as Lilith is trying to liberate you. It is trying to get you to do your deepest desires. It's trying to get you to do what you really want and what you really want to experience in your life in terms of your career, your status, your reputation. And so this is where you can see major changes in your life. Now, this is also making an aspect 
over to Neptune in Pisces. So again, getting this confusion aspect into this, this, this sensitivity, this feeling of being lost, of not knowing what to do, of really a lot of feelings coming to the surface. And really, this is calling for you to let go and to trust in your intuition and into the direction of which God is pulling you into at this time. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next major shift. This is the last major shift. There will be many other shifts going on throughout the year, but I wanted to highlight the biggest, most major shifts that are taking place here. This is the last major one where we see Mercury enter Taurus. So yes, Mercury has sped up since it has spent its time here where it is currently in Pisces. So Mercury is speeding up now. It has made its way into Taurus where it is now caught up to the sun, right? Mercury is here making this conjunction to Uranus and the sun where Mercury will go Kazemi, right? So as Mercury gets closer to the sun, the sun will black out Mercury, which will very much bring a lot of ideas to the surface, a lot of information to the light for many of you. And Mercury making this conjunction over to Uranus as well can create sudden changes once again in this career area that can very much come up through situations that are communicated and expressed to you by others. And so you may find others bringing you information that is coming to the surface here that is being revealed to you about major changes and shifts that need to take place here. A lot of you can also get major signs and major information here from your spirit guides and from the angels watching over you as Mercury is coming in here. It is bringing a lot of information about these changes and shifts that need to take place here, these radical changes and shifts in your career area of your life. This is also making an aspect over to Saturn in Aquarius as well as Pluto retrograde and Jupiter, which are still together here in Capricorn. And so once again, major shifts, not only in your career, but in the routines and responsibilities that you take care of every day in your life. Also, Saturn and Aquarius is here to say, it is time to make shifts and changes in your relationships, it is time for you to gain authority in your relationships and set the boundaries, set the pace of what it is that you want to experience here in your relationships. And so with Saturn here in Aquarius, which will be transiting your relationship house, this can also be a time of new relationships coming in because remember that Saturn is here in Aquarius shifting us into this brand new reality and so this can bring a new reality in your relationship area and for many of you who are married and are in committed relationships this can bring changes and shifts in this area as it is bringing you into a new focus and new reality that is focus on the future that is focused on innovation that is focused on humanity and unity and so this can very much open up new social interaction new experiences here in relationships for those of you who are single this can create a time of experiencing new relationships okay so this is your horoscope for the astrology for April of 2020 for Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the cards. And I did draw from the Connolly Tarot deck as well as the Barbieri Zodiac Oracle deck, the Black Moon Astrology deck, 
and we have a couple of playing cards here as well so let's go ahead and get into this the first card here starting out is the Hierophant so this is very much about your belief systems and remember in the astrology that we talked about this Sun and Chiron and Lilith influence in your beliefs in what you hold faith in and even this influence in your second house when the moon enters in Virgo right there is a little bit of a shift here and there's a little bit of a calling for you to continue to remain faithful remember that Neptune in your eighth house of being faithful of continuing to believe and understand and have hope due to what God is telling you and directing you towards in your life because this can be a major moment of confusing of confusion and chaos here and so there's a major call for you to focus on your beliefs and your values and having hope having faith believing as you're moving forward along this journey and with the knight of wands here in reverse it can very much feel like you are going backwards like things are not manifesting in your favor again remember there's a lot of shifts and changes taking place in your area of work and career and so this can feel like a moment of your passions and your hopes and your dreams and the things that bring you joy in your life sort of going backwards right many of us also not remembering to have fun and do what we love as it can feel like the weight is on your shoulder and holding you back and like you are in a time of heading backwards and not getting anything done in your life and so with this knight of wands in reverse remember to do what you love remember to bring that happiness and that joy and that social aspect back into your life and here with the seven of wands we are very much needing to plan ahead for the future needing to envision where it is that we want to go and so there's a lot here about what your future is going to look like in terms of your career and your work and how these things can bring joy and value into your life and so here very much calling you to start planning ahead start building the foundation start looking and envisioning into the future of where it is that you want to go what is the choice what is the decision that you are envisioning ahead with the four of wands once again calling for you to enjoy yourself calling for you to be social and again supporting this saturn in your relationship house that many of you may be entering into new relationships may be establishing new relationships or having major changes within your relationships that are opening you up to new social experiences that are advancing you taking you forward making things concrete but with this four of wands there is a call here for you to enjoy yourself to have fun to lighten up to celebrate and even though in these times where there is not much that you can do or these times that are trying or difficult for many of you there is a call for you to add this humor and celebration and liveliness into your life and so for many of you if you are joined by family if you are joined by a significant other if you are joined by people that you care about that you love there's a call here to be social to connect to bring this humor and this joy back into your life and with the knight of pentacles once again remembering that there are major shifts taking place in your area of career and work and the things that need to get done and so it is calling for you to enter into a new direction of work and commitment of career of the things that need to get done making sure that you are taking practical steps looking into the future doing what is of value to you what truly 
serves your highest, greatest good. And so for many of you, time to take action in these certain areas of your life. With the King of Swords here, there's a need for many of you to change your way of thinking. Because for many of you, you are in this space of doubt and fear and confusion. Remember that Neptune sitting back in your eighth house and that Lilith and Chiron sitting in your ninth house, that there can come a lot of confusion and a lot of doubt around your belief and around what you are connecting to and finding truth into. And so this is asking you to master your way of thinking, to change and come out of this negative way of thinking, out of this fear, out of this confusion, and coming into a positive space, coming into a space of connecting, of socializing, of thinking and communicating in a positive way. And we end here with the Five of Pentacles, where for many of you, you are unsure of your foundation. You are unsure of where you are, but there is a call to let go of fear. There is a call to let go of confusion, to let go of past situations, and to allow your intuition to guide you, to allow these guides and signs that are appearing into your life to show you the way because there is a call here to change your structure or your system or your way of getting things done here. Remember that that is supporting this Jupiter conjunct Pluto, which will go retrograde in your sixth house. We also have Mars here. So once again, this is a time, a call for you to take action, to do what you desire, to do what you are passionate about, what you love. And so this is not a time of holding back from the things that you truly desire and love. And as we are looking at this, what is it in your home, in your family, that brings you this joy, that brings you this passion, this excitement. Start to move towards that. Because yes, you are in this major time of shifting and changing. Remember that Uranus in Taurus sitting in your career house for many of you major shifts in your career, in your occupation, in the way that you're seen in the eyes of the public, right? Changing this area of your life. But also here, this is showing you that these changes are going to bring about growth. They are going to elevate you and take you higher in your life. And so as for some of you, these changes can feel chaotic. They can feel unexpected. They are here to help you to move forward on your path, on your journey. And we do have Mercury here as your last card. So once again, calling for this social interaction. This is a major theme here for those of you who have Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising about socializing and connecting to others during this time. Now going to the Black Moon Astrology deck here, we have the 11th house, Friends, which is in reverse, right? So there is this feeling of not feeling connected, not feeling associated with others here. And remember that that 11th house for many of you is in Gemini, where we have Venus entering and we will see later on in May, Venus will make a conjunction to the North Node. And so there is a lot to say here about not trying to seclude yourself, not trying to shut yourself off from the world, even though we are in these times, 
that it is calling for you to still remain social, to remain connected to others. We have Neptune sacrifice in reverse. And so for many of you, once again, these lower octaves of Neptune are coming in and deep within your eighth house for many of you out there, this Neptune energy is very much bringing in confusion, doubt, fears, worry, stress. And it is asking you to step into the higher octaves of Neptune which is in trusting in your intuition and following the path that God has laid out for you. And so it is calling for you to trust and believe in God, even though there is this blind spot, there is this feeling of loneliness, of confusion, of loss, of not understanding what is happening or going on at this time. And once again, this is supported by water. We get the water element sensing in reverse. For many of you, you are not in this space of trusting in your intuition, of listening to what your senses are trying to tell you. And so this is a call to go back within to check in with yourself, see how you are feeling, see what your intuition is telling you. And for many of you, this is a time for meditation. This is a time for introspection as this energy, once again, of Neptune and Pisces, for many of you, is sitting in your eighth house. And so this underground knowledge and information and these deep-seated feelings in your eighth house really asking you to transform and asking you to make decisions off of your intuition, right? And as we do have water here in reverse, remember that this is not making decisions off of your emotions, but however, making decisions off of your intuition. And so for those of you out there this can also be a time of needing to discern the difference between your emotions and your intuition. Now we saw this energy before Uranus as we went through the Barbieri Zodiac Oracle deck. Now here we have Uranus and the description that we have here is genius. Now we have Uranus in reverse, and so you don't have all the answers, you don't have all the information, you don't have all the clarity, the facts, and you are going through this chaotic time, this transformation, this shift, but remember that this is bringing you to a point of clarity, that this is bringing you to a point of evolving, of growing, of reaching new heights in your life. And so this change that you are going through is majorly necessary in your life. Remember that Uranus energy is in your 10th house for many of you. For those of you who have a Taurus midheaven, that this is very much affecting career and status. And for those of you who don't have this midheaven in those earlier degrees of Taurus, this can be back in your ninth house where there is this shift in your belief systems once again. We talked about that with that Lilith and Chiron energy. And for some of you, even in your 11th house where it can feel like you are shifting in friendships and the people that you are connecting to. And even these unexpected moments of not getting your long-term goals fulfilled as we are being shifted and thrusted into these different chaotic directions in life. Once again, Cancer, I feel a lot about this Neptune, Piscean, 8th house energy going on here about needing to trust in your intuition, needing to listen to your feelings, not in your emotions, but in your intuitive feelings. 
and really looking deep within, really understanding where you are emotionally at this time. So a lot of this emotional energy coming up for many of you, as this is a very emotional, sensitive, confusing time for many of you out there. Pisces, also very sensitive, very emotional. Once again, now we are getting Pisces, I believe, in reverse. Once again, corresponding back to that Neptune and Pisces in your eighth house. Many of you are not trusting and believing in your intuition, in your calling, in the direction that God is pulling you. Many of you are falling into fear and illusion and doubt in your life. And so this is a call for you to go back and look within and see what your intuition, to see what God is telling you at this time. And once again, Gemini, this very social energy coming through, again, this major theme here for many of you, especially those of you with Leo rising, right, that... Gemini energy back in your 11th house. And the description of what we get here is Gemini, I think. And so once again, this is calling for you to have positive thoughts, positive conversations. It's asking for you to be humorous, to be social, to be connected, to be close to your family and friends. And so even though we are in this time that can feel like containment or lockdown or social distancing, there is still a call here to be social. And going into these playing cards here, we have the Ten of Swords where this is asking you to end these old belief systems about how you should communicate how you should think, how you should interact with others, right? So there is an old belief system here for many of you about how you should interact with others, that it has to be face-to-face, -face, that it has to be a certain way. Now, this is asking you to come to a point of realization, right? This number 10 dealing with completion and new beginnings of really letting go of these old thoughts, these old belief systems surrounding the way that you should communicate and the way that you should connect to others and also surrounding these old thoughts and belief systems as well. And so coming into a new space of thinking, of communicating, of believing. And with the two of spades here, once again, there is this call to this number of duality to connect to others as well, this two of spades energy, but also this two here dealing with nurturing, with connecting. And so as you're coming into this space of feeling lost, feeling confused, there's a calling to reach out to others to communicate however that may be in your life, however that may manifest in your life, whether this is over the phone, whether this is over social media, right? There's a lot here about being social, being interactive here for those of you with Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. So that was your April 2020 horoscope for Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Thanks so much for watching. If you have gotten to this point, thanks so much for watching this entire video. This has been a longer video. If you enjoyed this, feel free to leave a thumbs up as well as a comment. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. If you are interested, feel free to join the group Astro Metaphysical Love and Light, where you can share your thoughts on any kind of spiritual wisdom, motivational advice, or positivity that you would like to share with others. And so this is a loving and positive group that you can join. Feel free. 
Also, if you are interested in learning astrology, feel free to join the group Astrology Lessons with Daquan Jones to learn astrology with me. Once again, I want to thank you all so much for joining. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you in the next video.